Tonight on the edge, a terrifying attack outside a target. A man punches a woman getting in her car, then pulled out a gun before a witness helped stop the assault. Fox News' Camille Lemire joins us live from Troy with reaction to this really scary incident. Camille, people go on shopping. They don't expect anything close to this to happening in a parking lot. Yeah, absolutely. We're actually at the Troy Police Department for our own safety. We were thinking 11 o'clock at night might not be the safest time to be in the parking lot at Target and Troy, but think about 9 o'clock. Think about 10 after 9 where it's still daylight hours. And really, this is the last thing you would think that would happen. In a Facebook post that has been shared more than 3,000 times, a Metro Detroit woman gives details about her horrifying ordeal a brazen attack in daylight. She writes, on 7723, a man fought his way into my parked car, attacked me, pointed a gun to my head, told me not to scream and to get in my back seat. It happened in the Target parking lot on Coolidge Highway in Troy, Friday night, a little after 9 p.m. Hearing that it happens this close to home is kind of just unsettling. I don't even know what I would do, I can't imagine. The victim fought back. And in the process, Troy police say the man who attacked her hit her in the face with a closed fist. Investigators releasing these surveillance images of the suspect. When Megan Murphy heard about what happened. And thought to myself, I'm going to bring my husband here today just to be extra safe. When this happened Friday night, investigators say the victim was able to get the attention of a good Samaritan who yelled at the suspect and ran towards the altercation, prompting the suspect to run away. I thought about it today. I thought like I need to order like pepper spray. The whole story, not surprisingly, has a lot of women on edge. Even this is like a 20 minute drive from me and I'll come to this target, not the one that's closer, just because I feel like this is nicer. But hearing that, you know, it doesn't really matter where you're at. It can happen anywhere, I guess. In her Facebook post, the victim urges others not to leave their home alone after 7 p.m saying the attack happened in a matter of two minutes and that she was caught completely off guard and was unable to defend herself. Definitely something I'm going to have to think a lot more about because I'm always on my phone looking around. We're all moving so quick. Just so shocking. This is the target that I go to at least once a week. It is always crowded, always busy. A lot of people almost seemed oblivious. They didn't know what was going on because it's just not something that you would expect to happen in this parking lot. Always so much activity. Now, I know those surveillance images are grainy, but police are asking that if you know anything at all, if he looks familiar, if you see him, to call Troy Police. And, of course, we'll be putting those pictures on our website, fox2detroit.com. Reporting live in Troy, Camila Mary on the edge. Yeah, and what's even more brazen and what's more terrible is the fact that a little after 9 o'clock at night here in Michigan during the summer, it's still relatively bright outside. Well, it isn't broad daylight. It certainly <laughs> is right in the middle of, you know, full view for everyone to see. Yeah, you know, the sun isn't shining per se at 9 o'clock, 10 after 9, but I specifically looked at the sky at that time tonight, and it was bright. It was light out. Another thing, too, is that we saw a lot of people with children. I know that maybe at 9 o'clock at night, maybe not, but then again, it's summertime. So it's just, it's horrifying to think that something like this could happen so brazen. He did not rob her, so we still don't know what the intention was. Uh, we don't know why he did this, but the bottom line is that everybody really needs to have their head on a swivel really be aware of your surroundings. Everyone needs Ruth, to check to out you. the website, fox2detroit.com, and look at that picture carefully and share it if you can. Camille, thanks for that live report. While three people were shot at a Detroit gas station back in May, one of them died. And now a second victim is firing back with a lawsuit. Plenty of nights I can't sleep. Uh, I'm in pain all the time. Man. Just, I don't smile, really. So... I don't even know how to be happy. Like right now, really can't talk. Like, it's sad. Well, he did, of course, lose his best friend in that shooting. This happened at the mobile on McNichols near the lodge. David Langston was shot in the hand, side, and back. He's had multiple surgeries, but still in pain, still unable to work. Attorneys say the gas station clerk locked the doors after the shooting suspect threatened to steal $4 worth of merchandise. And the lawsuit alleges the gas station owners were negligent with training and employee supervision. That clerk is also charged with involuntary manslaughter.
neighbors in Detroit's Spring Wells neighborhood are left shaken after an early morning standoff. The good news here, things ended peacefully. This started around 12.30 a.m. when police responded for shots fired inside a home on Homer near Lawndale. The gunman barricaded himself inside with family members, including a baby. At one point, he went outside and fired at police, striking a squad car. One person was grazed by a bullet. After three hours, the man ended up surrendering. Take out to Warren, a police officer there is sworn to uphold the law, now federally charged. The U.S. Attorney's Office has charged Matthew Rodriguez with deprivation of rights under color of law, a 10-year civil rights violation. Rodriguez was fired last month following an internal investigation by the Warren Police Department. Video from the Warren City Jail showed the officer punching an inmate, slamming his head to the floor. Rodriguez was originally charged by Macomb County officials, but that charge has since been dropped in the wake of those federal charges. And it was a wild 4th of July for Dearborn police. Yeah, now a man is charged, accused of launching a firework right at his squad car. 18-year-old Wail Harb was arraigned earlier today on four felony counts. As police responded to several fireworks-related calls, Harb allegedly launched a mortar right at a marked Dearborn patrol car, exploding and causing pretty major, major damage there. An officer and a citizen were inside the vehicle at the time. Harb was arrested over the weekend. Bond is set at $30,000. A revamp push for peace across the city of Detroit. The U.S. attorney, a Detroiter herself, is hitting the streets to promote the next peace, Nick. Here's Fox 2's Dave Spencer. It takes a lot of work to promote peace. All right, MPOs from the east side, y'all ready for Saturday? And U.S. attorney Don Eisen, a Detroiter, is willing to walk the walk. We are what? what? One, One Detroit. Detroit. One Detroit, that's right. Spreading the word, about a peaceful picnic. It's a peace nick, and we're gonna have all kind of food, fun, and resources. It's gonna be right there. This Saturday at the Hillman Rec Center. Three to seven. An event just like the one on the west side this past weekend. We're gonna have not only food and fun, everything is free, all kind of stuff, bouncy houses for the kids. They had an exotic petting zoo. The hope is it will paint police in a different light. We're doing this for you because we're trying to make this place peaceful for you. Especially for the kids. So that they see that we're real and that we care. And we have to have this non-enforcement kind of engagement with the community, especially at this young age. Last weekend, 1,200 people came out to Peace Nick at O'Hare Park. How are we going to make that last into the future and create a safer uh, neighborhood? We are doing this continuously. This is just part of it. This is just our summer enforcement. For this to truly work, you need people to believe in the message you're spreading. We need to be seen as people. Even if it means going door to door to build that trust. The U.S. Attorney, city officials, and members of the Detroit Police Department spent hours handing out flyers to people living in this neighborhood promoting peace Nick. But once they get these flyers, are the residents really paying attention and do they know what this is truly about? Someone knocked on my door and showed me this and it's a start. You got to start somewhere. According to the U.S. Attorney, they aren't trying anything new. She says this strategy has proven to work in other communities and believes the foundation will work here as well. Again, this free event is happening on Saturday from 3 to 7 at Heelman Park. In Detroit, Dave Spencer on The Edge. Well, that looks like a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. What a great event. Yeah, and what a great person to be leading the charge yes. as the uh, U.S. Attorney great here. Absolutely, great to see her out there. And, Native you know, Detroiter. Absolutely, beautiful. Well, turning to weather now, you can expect warm and humid conditions tomorrow. And we could also see some storms arrive later on. Weather Authority, Rich Luderman, joining us with the forecast. A uh, more active pattern, Amy and Rup, and I'll show you our first player. It's this cold front up here in the UP. Some big storms right now firing around Newberry and Sault Ste. Marie. Obviously, today was a beauty with lots of sunshine. Most of tomorrow is going to be rain-free, but as this cold front comes our way late in the day on Tuesday, we'll see a risk for some of those showers and storms, some of which could produce some gusty winds. It's going to be quiet for the rest of tonight. How about live pictures from Sault Ste. Marie? If you look close down here on the street level, you'll see it's raining pretty good. 62 degrees at the Sioux right now. 84 for us earlier today. 88 in Kalamazoo. Look at that 90 way up in Wausau. How about Alpena? Close to 90 degrees today. So it is going to be warm again tomorrow. More humid, breezy. We got to 84 today. Tomorrow we'll be up in that 87, 88 degree range. Right now, 65 Ann Arbor, 74 and how 72 up there to our north in Lapeer. The flow is from the south and west, and that brings in more humidity, and that'll be the case for the next 36 hours. 78 in Chicago, 79 as far north as Pelston right now, 72 to our south in Columbus. Certainly big heat across the uh, southern U.S., 90 in Dallas right now. 
now Albuquerque 90 degrees. That's pretty tough for us. It's our next cold front. There it is. Here it comes through the state late in the day for us. A chance of showers and storms and then Wednesday and Thursday we'll have more chances for wet weather. No all day soakers expected, but an unsettled pattern starting late in the day tomorrow. 66 the overnight low tonight. 87 tomorrow breezy, warm and humid with those late day storms and then notice chances for rain Wednesday, Thursday, Friday into Saturday as well. No all day soakers again. Rupert Amy a full check at 4 a.m. Rich, thanks so much. Well, tonight we are remembering a lifelong Detroiter. Former city council member Joanne Watson has died. She was known as a champion for black Detroiters. Fox 2's Dave Kinchin has a look at her legacy. Joanne and I grew up together. Uh, we went to school together. Uh, she's, she's my sister. And uh, we've been together since the fourth grade. A giant of Detroit activism, the Reverend Dr. Wendell Anthony, remembering another leadership giant in the city, former Detroit City Council member Dr. Joanne Watson, who died Monday at age 72. The pastor, radio personality, and first woman to head the Detroit chapter of the NAACP is being remembered for her lifetime of community service. The community has lost a great spirit, a great uh, fighter for freedom and justice and fairness. Women have lost a great champion. Black folk and people of color have lost somebody that spoke truth to power no matter who it was, where it was, what it was, or when it was. That's Joanne Watson. One of her most tireless efforts was working on reparations for black Detroiters. She was part of the city's first ever task force meeting on reparations this past April. Dr. Watson, at the last 40 years, talked about reparations for the city of Detroit, for black folks from Black Bottom and in all the areas where black people was removed from their homes. In, in the name of urban renewal. Adolph Mongo ran Watson's first campaign for city council back in 2003. Nobody, nobody gave us a chance to beat Gil Hill. Gil Hill had 89% name recognition. We believed that we can win and we won because she was there out in the community and, you know, people gravitated towards us. Uh, the reparations committee was just beginning their work back in April when we covered that first meeting. Watson and so many others were so excited to see where that work would go. So far, no cause of death has been announced and funeral arrangements have not been announced just yet. Dave Kinchin on the edge.